God bless you on today out there in Facebook land. I hope everything is going well with you. If not, God is the answer. I'm coming to you once again with the same message, the garment of praise, or are you wearing the garment of praise? What are you wearing? This is part two. Yesterday was part one. And before we pray and get into it, I like to make some corrections of some errors that I made on the first video. I mentioned that the name of the Messiah is Greek, Yahushua. The correction is it's Hebrew, Yahushua. Y A H U S. H U A, Yahushua. That's Hebrew, not Greek. Jesus is Latin. Again, the name Jesus is Latin. It's not the original name of the Messiah. The Hebrew culture does not use J's in their spelling. So the proper name for the Messiah is Yah. Who shall walk? And it's Hebrew. That's the first thing I want to make clear in a correction. The second thing is when I mentioned the things about sales, the tracking metrics, I got them confused between 12 and 41. There are 41 sales tracking metrics, which a lot of people in sales know nothing about. Companies purposely hold that back from their sales reps. And to be honest with you, some companies don't even know it, and that's sad. The other thing was the different types of sales methods, models, or what is called methodologies. There are 12 of those. They're very effective. This information came from a company who has a website that is very powerful and they make over a billion dollars a year. Why do you mention that? Because when you use effective strategies, according to the word of God, things happen with positive results. You get positive results. For example, the universal law of seed time and harvest plant a seed that seed could be encouragement that seed could be your time and you reap a harvest we're not talking about the deceptive manipulation of plant a seed and god's going to give you a miracle we're not talking about that type of manipulation we're talking about if you want a bed of roses in your yard as a wife or single woman you plant rose seeds you fertilize them you water them gets enough sunlight water and nutrients and it grows into a rose bush it's a universal law so let us go into prayer heavenly father we thank you in the mighty name of yahushua we plead the blood of yahushua over this message the messenger his family over the hearers that they would receive what you have for them today father god we're talking about the garment of praise part two so heavenly father help them to release everything that's hindering them from wearing the garment of praise those that are saved convict them bring them in Fill them with the Holy Ghost and deliver them. Satan, in the name of Yahushua, the blood of Yahushua is against you. We nullify and void and cancel your assignments. In the matchless name of Yahushua, amen. So today, again, we're going to part two of the garment of praise. I'm going to come from 2 Chronicles chapter 5. We're reading from 2 Chronicles chapter 5. For those of you that are new to the Bible, that's the Old Testament. 
We're going to look at an incident about the garment of praise. What happened? So 2 Chronicles chapter 5, and we'll start at about the 11th verse. The priest then withdrew from the holy place. All the priests who were there had consecrated themselves, set themselves aside for prayer. Regardless of their divisions, all the Levites who were musicians, Hasaph, Heman, Judathan, and their sons and relatives stood on the east side of the altar, dressed in fine linen and playing cymbals, harps, and lyres. They were accompanied by 120 priests sounding trumpets. Now, in your Bible, and in my Bible, it says trumpets, but in the Hebrew culture, it was ram's horns. They produce a particular sound, and a ram represents the power and voice of God in the Hebrew culture. So it's very important to understand that. So the trumpeters or the ram horn players and singers join in unison as with one voice. What happened? To give praise, the garment of praise, and thanks to Yah, God the Father, accompanied by the ram's horn, cymbals, and other instruments, they raised their voices in praise to Yah and sang. He is good. His love endures forever. Then the temple of Yah was filled with a cloud and the priests could not perform their service because of the cloud for the glory of the Lord filled the temple of God. Read that again in your Bible. The priests and the Levites joined together the musicians were playing with the cymbals and the harps. Others were blowing the ram's horn and it they were on one accord. <clears throat> the result of this garment of praise was the temple was filled with the Shekinah glory of the Heavenly Father. And the priest could not move around. The glory cloud was so strong thick and powerful. Many scholars feel that since the priest could not stand and minister, that because of the power of God, they actually fell down. If you read the book of Daniel, when Daniel experienced visions at times given by God, the glory of God showed him things. Daniel fell down because the glory of God saps natural strength. It trains it. God is that powerful. So there's another incident where someone was in God's presence and fell down. Isaiah, I believe the first chapter, when the angel put the coal on his tongue and he saw the train or the robe of God, he said, woe is me, I'm undone. The glory of God diffuses the flesh and it diffuses the plans, presence, and work of the enemy and demonic forces. It's very important to realize. You hear the music in the background? This one is called Fire of the Holy Spirit. And I gave encouraging words that God wants his people to worship him and praise him above the problems. We talked about Isaiah 61 and 3, which mentions the garment of praise and how it destroys the spirit of of heaviness, depression, oppression, suppression, regression, grief, stagnation, lust, anxiety, worry, fear, doubt, unbelief, manipulation, deception, lying, 
It destroys all of that. And that's why when you read the Psalms, there are so many Psalms referring to praise and worship. The Messiah said if he's lifted up, he will draw all men and women to him. Yahushua was said that in the Gospels. It just doesn't mean to lift up his name, which is vitally important. It means to worship and praise him. So there's an atmosphere of peace. We talked about the things that happens as I go back to my notes. When you worship and praise God how it diffuses the works of the enemy, how it brings in the peace and presence of God. That's important. And how we can be calm enough and receive God's wisdom. Hear his voice. John 10 says, My sheep know my voice and another they will not follow I am the good shepherd in order to recognize God's voice you and I have to spend time in his presence not always asking for things but just worship and thank him 1 Thessalonians 5.16 Pray without ceasing. Thank him no matter what in spite of all circumstances. So you can hear his wisdom. A lot of you may be believing God for a miracle and he can do that. However, there are other times that God wants you to learn how to work a strategy that he's given you. Matthew 14 and 15 refer to Yahushua the Messiah multiplying the fishes and the loaves to feed the multitude. Before that miracle took place, the Messiah gave instructions. <clears throat> Sit down on the grass. Simple instructions. He also took the bread and the fish and blessed it and thanked the Father for the food. Thanksgiving is a way to worship and praise the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. After he praised the Father, thanked him for the food, it miraculously <clears throat> multiplied. So God wants to remind you of the benefits of worshiping him. And he also wants to remind you of the things that hinder one from hearing God and worshiping God. I mentioned yesterday, I'll go over some of the things. Stop watching so much television. 99% of the things on television are there to program your mind into fear, into thinking that homosexuality and lesbianism is correct. They have women on commercials talking like men. They have men on commercials dressing and talking like women it is an abomination unto God the Father. And if you're not careful, you'll join the 70% of people in America who believe that that filth is okay. Pride parades. When I was coming up, there was Freddie Fixer, St. Patrick's Day. And now we have the Puerto Rican parade. You don't see them going around with that garbage an abomination unto God. So be careful what you hear, what you look at. Be careful of the music. Again, this music here is called 
fire of the Holy Spirit. It's all instrumental. C.C. Winans also has very good worship and praise music. As far as I know, at this point, she has not crossed over to the dark side like many other musicians. You see, the Winan brothers have pulled out of that industry because it's so dirty and rotten. Unfortunately, Vicky Winans, who used to be married to Marvin, they're divorced now because Vicky wanted to chase the money. But notice C.C. Winans, B.B. Winans, and all of the other Winan brothers that are not in mainstream music anymore because their parents gave them a solid foundation to wear the garment of praise and it will help you to discern traps in areas of business because music is a business versus Vicky who married into the family and is now divorced wanted to chase the money if you look back at some of her videos she's wearing red she has the checkerboard floor in some of her videos, the black and white checkerboards. All of that represents witchcraft. Those of you not aware, not wearing the garment of praise or failing to recognize that Mary Mary has crossed over long ago to the dark side. Dressing provocatively, wearing black in certain things in their videos that symbolize evil worship and dedication and not the worship and garment of praise that God has commanded. So be careful of what you listen to. Also mentioned about plain praise and worship videos, staying away from negative people, people that like to complain, and this too. <clears throat> Born again believers especially. If you're with a bunch of believers that all they want to do is quote the scriptures and all they want to do is go to a service and they have no other plans given by God to better their lives, their generation and to impact the 30% of individuals who don't believe that homosexuality and lesbianism is right. The 30% agree with God. They believe that stuff is an abomination. And it is time now that if you are in the 30% that you allow God to magnify himself in your life so that we can change the world for God and his kingdom. There's a rule in business called the 2080 rule. Again, in business, there's a rule called the 2080 rule. Here's what it means. I'm going to break it down real slow. The 2080 rule means this. You take 20% of your time, research, and effort in a particular area. You focus on that, those areas so much, 20% of the time, to where it's so powerful, it influences the other 80%. I'll give you an example in the Bible. When Gideon gathered his army, he had all these men. I believe he started out with over 10,000. And God said, you got too many. When Gideon got down to the number 300, God said, those are the ones I want to use. God used a small number to impact the bigger part of the population. Do you understand? You all you get this through garment of praise, praising God, this wisdom and insight. 
Do you understand that all logical and positive science comes from God? One plus one equals two came from God. Two times two equals four came from God. When you say God is omnipotent or powerful, omnipresent, everywhere at the same time, and omni-science, he is the most powerful scientist. Businesses function off a science, proven ideas and formulas that can be repeated to get positive results. When you worship and praise God, you get positive results. Your intimacy with the Father grows stronger. Your trust in God grows stronger. These gentlemen in 2 Chronicles 5, 11 through I believe the 15 verses, the priest and the musicians and the ram horn players that God I want to core with each other to do one thing, worship Yah, worship God the Father, the omnipotent one, the omnipotent science one, the multiplier, the fruitful one, the bountiful one, the miracle worker, the creator of all creation. It says the glory of God came down and the priest could not stand. If you go to 2 Chronicles, I believe it's 7. Yes. Where King Solomon dedicated the temple. After he dedicated the temple, if you look in the 6th chapter, You'll see where they're praising God. Verse 41, Now arise, O Lord God, and come to your resting place, you in the ark of your might. May your priests, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation. May your saints rejoice, that's worship, in your goodness. O Lord God, do not reject your anointed one. Remember the kindness promised to David, your servant. Chapter 7, verse 1 says, When Solomon finished praying, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. The priest could not enter the temple of the Lord because the glory of the Lord filled it. So again, the garment of praise came, was used and the power of God came down. That's Second Chronicles chapter 6, verses 41 to verse 42, and then chapter 7. It talks about the fire of God coming down. Elijah in 2 Kings, the first chapter, when they put a hit on him, because Elijah was a God worshiper, wore the garment of praise, he called down fire upon his enemies. Miracles take place when you worship the Father. So the garment of praise is vitally important. If you go to Acts chapter 4, verses 8, 24, and 31, the apostles were being persecuted. They prayed a prayer, and it says the power of God filled the area and shook the place, and people got saved and delivered. The power of God. Revelation chapter 7. Put on the garment of praise, stop all the foolishness, and get in line. Revelation chapter 7. Talking about the garment of praise, verses 9 through 12. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and in front of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands and they cried out with a loud voice. In other words, they were singing. Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Worship. God requires worship. All the angels, verse 11, were standing around the throne and around the elders, the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before 
the throne and worship God, saying, there it is again, worship God and praise. Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Let me give you a secret. If you want the enemy off your back and you're a born again believer, you can quote this verse right here, these verses. And trust me, the devil will back up and the power of God will increase in your life. Why? You're lifting up God's word. You're lifting up what he said. You're lifting up his character. See, it's all about God. The garment of praise is an attitude. When blind Bartimaeus heard that the Messiah was coming in, he threw off his negative garment. He threw it off. People were saying, Bartimaeus, leave the rabbi alone. Leave the teacher alone. He said, forget you. I'm going to get my healing. He was worshiping Yahushua in his heart. And he got healed. It's vitally important. So if you look in Revelation 11, and we're going to see verses 3 through 6, it says... And I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1,260 days, clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. And if anyone tries to harm them, fire comes from their mouths and devours this, their enemies. This is how anyone who wants to harm them must die. This is referring to Enoch and Elijah, the two people who were God worshipers. They worshiped God so much, they didn't even see death. They're still alive. They passed right by the grave. Why? They were God worshipers. So worshiping God restores your health. Psalms 103, he restores our youth. He restores our health. Why? Look at those first verses. Praise God, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Worshiping God. Not begging, not pleading, not crying and spitting and slobbing. Just worship God. Lift him above your problems and he'll usher in his presence. His wisdom and favor. Right here in Revelation 11 is talking about the protective side of God. These men of God who are God worshipers, Enoch and Elijah, spoke and fire came out of their mouths. Literal fire and kills their enemies. They also can shut up the heavens turn water into blood like Moses did. You and I have that same type of authority. Holy Ghost fire. And there are some people in these days that God is going to burn up supernaturally by fire. They're rebels against God. And those 70 percenters, which includes people that go to church like Joel Osteen's church, full of sin and wickedness. T.D. Jakes, that's only part of the situation. It's going to get worse for him. He's a Mason. Masons worship the devil. His doctrine is off. People that are going to these churches that are not following God. And if you're a sinner listening to this, I encourage you, first of all, give your heart to the Messiah. Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. I now receive your son, Yahushua, into my life. That's Yahushua, into my life. Set me free from Satan and fill me with the Holy Ghost. Open my eyes so that I will not walk in sin and darkness anymore. Open my, your word unto me and keep me away from jacked up churches and preachers that is the truth you better read the book of ezekiel paul talked about the last days many will depart from the faith many weren't even in the faith jeremiah talks about those that were sent and those that went <clears throat> some people were sent by god others went by the hand of the enemy using their flesh paul talks about demonic ministers looking like angels of light the Messiah talked about not being fooled, understanding his voice, hearing his voice. How do you hear it more? How do we understand it more? By worship and praise to the Father, to the Son, praising God for the Holy Ghost. Getting that wisdom and those instructions and following through. 
a lot of churches with this 501c3 if you want to visit a church go ahead ask them about the 501c3 program which the government gives them subsidies for their food banks and whatnot however those churches are under the rule and power of the government which is a bunch of people people with money that manipulate and control people that's not God being in control. Is it wrong to feed the hungry? No, but there's a better way to do it. G Yahushua, God provided in Matthew 14 and 15 with the fishes and loaves. He didn't lean on the government. He's your example. He's our example. So you have to walk in the light as the Messiah and the Father and the Holy Ghost are in the light, not in the darkness. So yes, I had you to pray that prayer for God to keep you out of the churches that are marrying homosexuals and sodomites, that are marrying lesbianism. Some, a lot of these pastors are funny. I can remember back in the day when I was in Christian outreach, a certain bishop uh, whose church is still on Dixwell Avenue picked up a young man who I know was involved with homosexuality. So I used to hang with his brother. His brother taught me martial arts. And they weren't going to choir practice. And I'll never forget Pastor Pulley getting up in the pulpit, telling some of the young men in the congregation where we were to stay out of this particular church, Trinity Temple. He said they breed faggots. That's a powerful statement. He said they breed faggots. If you're struggling with homosexuality, don't go inside that church. They breed faggots. Uh, when someone says someone just congregates, that's one thing. But when he said breeds, that means produces, multiplies, faggots, sodomites. Those are strong words. And unfortunately, you look in Ezekiel 12 and 13, God is speaking judgment upon witchcraft and a lot of these ministers and churches are just jacked up. They're not concerned about the people. Now there are, thank God for the pastors and leaders and believers in the 30% that do love God. <clears throat> there is hope. There are some people that do love God. There are some pastors that do love God. There are some apostles, prophets, evangelists and prophetess and teachers that do love God but for a woman to be a pastor or a bishop or call an apostle is out of order don't go inside that church don't fellowship there that's not true worship of God Paul speaks clearly about the roles of the men and the women the women are to teach other women how to love their house husbands and how to raise children. Teach them about family according to the word of God. I always mention this book, His Needs, Her Needs, by Dr. Willard Hawley Jr. Get it. It's on marriage. If you're single, want to get married, get it, read it, and ask God to give you wisdom and insight and empowerment so you won't get trapped or tripped up with somebody that's messed up. You have to be careful. All of this comes through worshiping God. Just like in 2 Chronicles 5, when the priests blew, I mean the, the uh, musicians rather blew with the ram's horn and they played the music and the priests were standing there, the power of God was so strong they couldn't stand. I mentioned in the other video, times when we were praising God and Pastor Pulley as the pastor in Christian Outreach on 125 Dixwell Avenue, the power of God was so strong, we couldn't even have service. God just took over his presence. Remember, he's omnipotent, all-powerful. Praise and worship gives God room to do what he wants to do and not what people want to do. So trust God. If you have not been wearing the garment of praise, you need to take off all of the garments and put it on. I want to go to Revelation 19.
Verse 1, it says, After this I heard what sounded like the roar of a great multitude in heaven shouting, Hallelujah! Worship! Salvation and glory and power belong to our God, for true and just are his judgments. He has condemned the great prostitute who corrupted the, corrupted the earth by her adulteries. He has avenged on her the blood of his servants. And again they shouted, Hallelujah! Worship! The smoke from her goes up forever and ever. The 24 elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshiped God who was seated on the throne. And they cried, Amen, Hallelujah, garment of praise. Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, you who fear him both small and great. And then they go down with more, Hallelujah, six verse. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters and the loud peals of thunder shouting, hallelujah, for our God almighty rhymes. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory for the wedding of the lamb has come. But what happened before that? God's judgment is about to hit this earth. It's already started, starting in the house of God, the body of Christ. It's going to get worse fire of God is going to move. You don't believe it? Read Acts chapter 5. Ananias and Sapphira fell down dead, lying to the Holy Ghost. A lot of liars in churches today, in the pulpit, they're going to drop dead by the power of God. Read Acts chapter 12. Herod, an unsaved king, took God's glory, dropped dead on the scene. Worms ate him up right there. His body started deteriorating. I'm not making it up. Read your Bible. Judgment of God. Revelation 19, the judgment of God. Revelation 20 says in verse 9, And the devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Judgment. I keep saying it. Read your Bible. According to the Bible, real prophetic messengers always talk about God's judgment and for the people, group, nation, or country to repent before God, worship the Father, put on the garment of praise, which equals obedience. That's a form of worship. Obedience is worshiping God. Obedience is being committed to God. Obedience as best you know how. Stay out of these jacked up churches. Read your Bible. Listen to the word on YouTube, Psalms and Revelation and Proverbs. They're just reading it. Ask God for wisdom and understanding. That's a worship. Giving him time and dedication in his presence. Build your intimacy with the Father. And if you've just gotten saved or recently saved, do the same. Stay out of these churches. When God does lead you to a church, he's going to lead you to a pastor and a church who believes in God and does it in balance. That man and his staff will be in the 30%. But until then, let God lead you, not other people, not yourself. So God bless you today. I pray that this message has set the captives free and that you would put on the garment of praise and take off everything from hindering you from doing that. Bye-bye.